Don't but then read? if I read a poem, I, and you might not get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So we can have the same. No, no, a different poem. I have the profound reaction to, but you hate it, or you just don't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the same with religion, right? Yeah, it's I think poem, so. right? different paths to the same essential reality. It's quite profound. Is this profound? Is this profound? Is this I don't know. Profound? If we analyze it, or we we are conscious of its profundity, then it becomes like. Yeah, I think our listeners profound. would have to tell us if this profound. Okay. Right. I think our listeners would have to make that judgment. Yeah, but why? Why are we getting people to judge us, or Isn't or for us to judge ourselves, or us to judge other people? Why don't, they just listen, why don't they just listen to it and then ignore it and go on with their lives? No, I agree with that. That's what people should be expecting yeah, yeah, from yeah. our I podcast. I think that's better because we don't want them to take take our nonsense with them. <laughs> <laughs> We're only releasing it like on iTunes, so it stays in iTunes. Yeah, yeah. For after our death. Yeah, yeah. So that's an interesting concept, actually. So you know how we all, or you think all, re- uh, all, and I do agree with you that all religions sort of start from the same essence, and that all spiritual experiences are derived of that same essence. If you were to create a new religion, no, do you think there is a way of experiencing a different spiritual experience? Different one that hasn't had one that one that hasn't been experienced before. Yeah, because like, a lot of spiritual experiences are receiving something from God whereas we just were we touched on the subject of giving something to God yeah and that's not like you know burning incense or we're just talking throughout our daily lives we're feeding back to God but is there a way to experience that because a lot of experience like a lot of experience through prayer and stuff is God talking to you so I think what about us talking to God well, no, a lot of prayer is us talking to God. I think, I think yeah, more, sorry, to be honest, more that. Yeah, it's more that. Sorry, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but I think this is just more a question of perception rather than, um, or like the way in which we like to talk about something rather than the actual experience itself. I think the general experience, uh, spiritual experience, is fairly similar between um, these different different people, and it becomes not about. I think most spiritual experiences, like these, they aren't. Um, there's like a dissolution of the self in which you are in complete harmony with God. It's not really this notion of giving or receiving yeah, yeah, or this yeah, like directional true. thing starts to dissolve. And the way in which we consider like everyday human relationships, like I give to you and you give to me yeah, yeah. in this spiritual experience, um, which even in human relationships can happen and we would probably call it love. Um, we dissolve. And then we give and receive, right? Yeah. Oh, well, they, sorry, no, we're not just giving and receiving, we're just in harmony, right? Sorry. Yeah. So that's really interesting though, too. I think a lot of people do see God though as something that you give and receive too. Even you alluded to that, right? God is giving to us all, sorry, God is we're receiving from God, but we're also giving back. Well I feel like it's yeah, like molding, like forming, forming. each other, forming and And trying to achieve perfect harmony, right? Yeah. But I think that when you have like these um kind of like these experiences in which there's a dissolution of self and where you feel connected to God or whatever, this uh, intellectualization of what we're talking now about just like ceases to exist. And so everything that we um, are talking about now is like an academic retrospection of an experience. And it's not the true nature of the experience itself. It's just the way that we try to make sense of it. But then we can't recapture the experience because that experience has been warped by these academic discussions. Well, I think if we if we we can kind of use certain uh, poetic think, and metaphorical. Do you think we have the language to truly define a spirituality, spiritual experience? Not in the same way that everyone describes near death experiences the same way. Maybe we just don't have the language to describe it. Okay. No, yeah, I don't think we. I think this is where like poetry and the mystics come into play, where they start using language in a way that kind of transcends language and moves us to like a the feeling or the essence of God yeah, yeah. without describing it like you describe it um, sensorily rather than uh, I don't know physically so do you think so you know a lot of people talk about what God may look like or you know this sort of feeling that they get when they're in the presence of God but do you think God has a scent does God have a scent do you think God has a smell so that's the crux right because olfactory language is bullshit like we find it really hard to uh, define spells and put smells into language, yeah. but maybe it's because God has a scent, and we just don't know. We don't have this language on how to do, how to explain it to people. Do you think God has a scent, or is what? he scentless? Scentless. Well, we. Um, I, I feel like if we asked our parents, they'd probably say, "Elachi." 
<laughs> or like cardamom. That's yeah, cardamom, like right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe yeah, chai. But there's actually, I've got a, a friend of mine who uh, she she's got like a very strong nose, and I I always told her like I've, for me music has always been kind of and like audio things have been the most sensory experience for me. And I used make to, a podcast. yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, so I used to, like, sometimes I hear the nothingness, I call it, like, the nothingness, but I can, like, perceive, like, the emptiness of all reality in which, like, it feels very, but it's so intense. Um, and, uh, she says I can smell the nothingness. I can smell, like, I, I was asking her if she has this experience. She says not with sound or anything, but I like, smell. smell nothingness? Yeah. Dude, is that she, says she says it smells a little bit like Paris. <laughs> like Paris... Uh-huh. All the time, or Paris in a certain year, or Paris a certain suburb. Oh, Actually, but that's irrelevant. So, do you think she's smelling God? The nothingness that she's smelling is that God? Yeah, she's also basically uh, the sort of um, reincarnation of Nietzsche. So, <laughs> 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 but she also says that nobody understands Nietzsche. So, I don't know. Maybe God, God is dead, is not God is dead. Well, I like the idea that Nietzsche. No one understands Nietzsche, so someone has to be reincarnated as Nietzsche to help yeah. explain his work. <laughs> so maybe in the future, someone will be reincarnated as us to explain our podcast. To explain, that would be good, yeah. I don't, I don't know if she's the reincarnation. I'm just naming her this. Because... Well, I like the idea of smelling God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Also, like, really, what's, what's, what I struggle with is how come everything doesn't smell of bogeys? I think that's probably a good point to stop. And this, is where, this is where the conversation is going. We should probably stop here. We should probably stop here. Such nonsense. <laughs> Ruining a person perfectly good religious chat with bogeys. Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs>